From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong. Yes, this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the music's played. So tune right in, watch your brain. This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show. Let the music flow of every style and creed. And you can bet your socks that ETX rocks. ETX rocks. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with the 18th episode of Songbirds and Troubadours presented by the ETX Rock Show, where we focus on the songwriter, one of the most unheralded arms of the music business, in my humble opinion. We're really excited to feature two brand new singer-songwriters each and every Sunday night, and we publish these episodes Wednesday morning. But this week, of course, we have two brand new artists here in the living room, the ETX Rock living room, a.k.a. the set. <laughs> something like that. And we have Anthony Torres from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who I think probably wins the award for the one that has come from the furthest away to be on the show. And we have Terry Lee Moore, from originally from Tyler, but now living in Stephenville. And uh, Terry, uh, was, uh, she's a replacement for tonight, so I would definitely want to thank you for coming in on somewhat short notice. I know it's <laughs> been a few days, but uh, we've been trying to get with Terry for probably about four months or so. Give or take, yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. And so, Anthony, tell us a little bit about, again, where you're from and a little bit about your musical journey so far. Well, uh, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, born and raised out there. Um, I've lived in Colorado. I've lived out here in Texas, rodeo and riding bulls my whole life. And uh, music was something I just did with, when I was going down the road rodeoing. And uh, I got hurt at a, a major event and kind of put me in a wheelchair. And so after that, I was like, well... I guess music's a little safer than riding bulls. Someone has <laughs> go down this road for a little bit and try this electric rodeo out. <laughs> yeah. You always think that. Yeah. yeah. You think that until you're in a rowdy crowd of country music fans at about 4 o'clock in the morning. That was last night. <laughs> <laughs> Still safer than the bulls? Mm, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what kind of music do you play? You know, I, I have a wide variety of the songs I write. You know, people would try to categorize, categorize them as of what kind of genre they would try to fit in, but um, I feel like it's just outlaw country music, you know, at its finest. I lay it all on the line every single time, just, I write from the soul, I write from the heart, you know, as you, you'll hear tonight, you know, some of them songs are, it's get deep, you know, and um, my, I classify it as like outlaw Texas country music, Very I guess. Very cool. Well, it's, it's great to have you here, and definitely want to thank you for coming from so far away, and and have an interest in being with us here on the on Songbirds and Troubadours. Oh, it's it's always a pleasure being able to come back to Texas. You know, I love I love Texas so much. They they inspire me to write new songs. All the fans out here, because how much love they give you, and how much that they love for the songwriting. Yeah. You know, uh, I play a lot of places. You know, and I've traveled a lot of places, and a lot of places really don't show you appreciation for the songwriting yeah. like they do here in Texas. So I'm always always glad to be back here, and thank you for having me. No problem. And Terry Lee Moore, finally on the ETX Rock <laughs> Show, after forever that I've known about this girl, just a phenomenal singer-songwriter in her own right. So again, you're originally from Winona, Texas, so very familiar for our East Texas listeners out yes, there. Uh, but now you're in Stephenville, so tell us a little bit about your musical journey so far. So honestly, I, from the time I was about, I can't remember if I was 8 to 10 years old, uh, from then up until 2016. I did not sing in, in front of anybody because I was I was in choir at the time. It was just, you know, a little down home country choir and I was in I was in the choir and there were a bunch of folks that were in class with me because I mean we all went to the same school and all went to the same right. church. And I was a soprano because I was so young that my voice hadn't developed yet and this, this guy started making fun of how high my voice sounded and I was a really, really shy, impressionable kid and so he was just making fun of the fact that my voice was very high pitched but I thought it just meant that I wasn't a good singer and so right. I didn't sing in front of anybody for eight to ten years give or take I was at a show in uh, Stephenville at City Limits and William Clark Green went and played and it was the first time I ever got to see him uh, live and just the way he played on stage it 
I had never seen that before. I'd been to about 30, 40 shows by that time, just over a few months. Yeah. And Will I've will never, have that effect on you. Will is, he's yeah. absolutely amazing. And so uh, afterwards, I was like, you know, I just want to go and talk to this guy, you know, say hi, tell him he had a great show, tell him I'm from Tyler too, get a picture and go. And I have three, three of the five forms of anxiety, so I'm running over everything that I'm going to say to him in my head. Uh, just so I can, you know, get in, get out, and not mess anything up. And so I get up to him and I say, hey, my name's Terry Lee Moore. I'm uh, from Tyler as well. And the second I said I was from Tyler, it launched us into like an hour-long conversation awesome. about East Texas. Yeah. And so I went home that night and I was thinking, you know, he and I are from the same place. Right. If he can do it, why can't I? Not knowing if I could actually sing, not knowing how to play guitar or anything like that. But I picked up a guitar in May. I started writing that February and then in May I picked up a guitar I uh, finally sat there and taught myself. It was the third time I tried to teach myself. And that May of next year, I got my first show, and now here I am. That's awesome. <laughs> and so how would you categorize your genre? I don't. Uh, the closest I can come to categorizing it is, is songwriter, because I hit on so many different genres. Awesome. There's, there's no way for me to pinpoint it. I and I exactly completely agree. If you guys are tuning in and you're a follower of Terry's, you know that's true. Because uh, she puts out a lot of uh, acoustic videos on her page, and it's never the same thing. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, it's a very good follow, and I hope you guys will, will give both of these guys a follow and a like on social media. And we'll definitely talk more about their social media towards the end of the show. Uh, for you venues out there, that's where you'll want to tune in because we'll get their contact information. And that way you can book them wherever they, wherever y'all are. I'm sure they'll play wherever uh, wherever is needed. And uh, the way the show works, if you're tuning in for the first time, is this is going to be in a song swap style. You're going to hear all original music that's been written by both Anthony and Terry. And uh, we'll do at least five songs. If they're feeling up to it, they may do a few more than that. Who knows? You just have to tune in to find out. And in the middle of the show, we have a, a segment called Question Swap, where these two will ask each other questions which is always a lot of fun because you just never know what's going to come out of that segment. It could be stupid questions. It could be really deep. It could be about the business, about songwriting. You just never know. Uh, and it's always a lot of fun to see what the artists come up with. Uh, so without any further ado, guys, this is Songbirds and Troubadours, number 18, brought to you by the ETX Rock Show. We're going to get right to the live original music right now. Don't go anywhere. So this song right here is one of the first songs I wrote when I first started playing music. Being born and raised in New Mexico, uh, Billy the Kid, William H. Bonney had a big influence on me, you know. He definitely had a big impact on me. My band is called Anthony Torres and the Regulators, so obviously he did. So uh, this song is called William H. Bonney.
down in New Mexico. Some say I made my escape, that I lived out all my days. But that is only God knows. called Ashes and so I just recently released an EP but right now I'm already writing my first full-length album uh, which is going to be called Thorns. I have no clue when it's coming out but I'm working on it right now and essentially the entire album is kind of about it's a behind-the-scenes look into what life is like in the music industry and so I don't know a lot about it yet but I'm writing about what I've learned and so this song is called Ashes and it's essentially talking about I've definitely made a lot of bad decisions in my life and I'm trying to turn some of that stuff around right now and, and be a better person and it's almost like a crying wolf story uh, because people don't really want to sit there and, and help you out because they've seen that you're consistently doing so many things um, that are bad but at the end of the day I'm, I'm trying to get to somewhere better and if nobody's going to help me out I'm going to have to do it myself but if I stop uh, the line says if I don't run I'll trip and fall to ashes so if I stop, I, I'm going to be left with nothing. And so I'm just, whether or not somebody's going to sit here and try to help me out, I need to help myself out and kind of prove to everybody I'm, I'm doing what I can to be the best person I can be. So this song is called Ashes. If I don't run, I'll trip and fall to ashes. But I can't see through the flames rising all around. I've grown weary from the smoke as the time passes But if I lose my grip, this world will drag me down Storm brews in the distance, I can hear the thunder roll My head strides the corner of my eyes Yeah, I dig that, girl. I love how you started it in the acapella. 
That's, I, oh, that's been it, tough. It is, and it is beautiful, though. And then you just go straight into it. That was awesome. Appreciate that was that. awesome. I dig that one. So, <clears throat> all right. This song I'm going to play for you all now is called, it's called Six String Outlaw. I wrote this song when I was passing through Texas. I was actually on my way to a wedding in Austin for one of my best friends. And uh, so I wrote this song along them lines. Um, it's kind of do with the music industry a little bit. You know, it's it's got a lot of, you know, things that are glamorized that if you go chasing that, that glitter, it really ain't gold, you know, between the booze and the party and the women and stuff like that. So this song is called, called Six String Outlaw. released an album it's called the 281 project available probably everywhere I don't know I paid for the full uh, distribution services but the what I've been told is the most uh, popular I guess song on there from my friends and, and fans and folks who have listened to it is 1990 and as a songwriter it always kind of baffles me because I didn't really have a story behind that song and um, I always focus on the stories behind songs so hearing that just some regular song is something that everybody else loves it's kind of weird to me because I didn't think it was my best song, but everybody seems to like it. Um, but I wrote this July of last year, right before I went to the Hill Country for the first time, and it's uh, it's starting to become one of my favorites. So this is a song called 1990.
driver crazy like that is that's a line right there <laughs> that's the line right there um i'm gonna go with this song real quick and i'll go yeah i'll punch them for you but whatever <laughs> this song right here uh i wrote about six months ago i got done playing a show with my full band and i walk in the house and my dad says how was the show i said it went great he says well you need to write a new song and i said i write songs all the time dad what are you talking about he says you need to write a song to get people on the dance floor I said, all right, give me a minute. Ten minutes goes by, I walk back out, and the garage says, how does this sound? So this song is called Cut a Rug. I cut it that first track, wrapped it in there, and uh, yeah, this song is called Cut a Rug. The promo video is on YouTube for it, so go check that out. Um, but here we go. Well, I want a new ball on a Friday night. The jukebox was playing, it was sounding all right. But nobody was dancing at all So I grab my guitar and I sit on Grab a girl
That's gonna be the single we're gonna end up releasing. That's, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to dance a lot, and that's that's got one of those beats that I would very easily be able to dance to. So. What do you mean you used to? <laughs> well, I'm I'm no longer on the floor. I'm, I'm on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, touche. <laughs> I think I've danced maybe three times in the past year. <laughs> so my first question to you: <laughs> If uh, you had one songwriter to work with, who would it be? Sean Why? McConnell. Definitely Sean McConnell. It's just, he tackles so many, I was actually talking to my friend Leah about this last night, he tackles so many abrasive subjects and makes some of the best music out of it. But, and I say abrasive, there are some, some of it's just, you know, things that people don't want to talk about. Some of it's things that people are like, you know, if you're a musician, you shouldn't talk about that because we as musicians shouldn't get into politics and people's matters and everything like that actually jason jason Isbell wrote a song about that but i've been listening to sean mcconnell was actually the very first um texas red dirt music artist that i'd ever heard i know he's not from texas um but the very first song i ever heard that got me hooked into texas country was bottom of the sea off of his b-side session and it's just the the artistry in that song not just his songwriting but mm. with um, every different part of that song as far as the different instruments and the way it all comes together especially with it being a b-side I didn't know what that was at the time I just knew I liked it yeah. and it sounded cool uh, but I would definitely love to work with Sean McConnell either him or ja Janie Lynn Wilson but she's like secretly my girl crush <laughs> I love her and we all have those <laughs> actually it's not a secret everybody knows I love her <laughs> there's something about these Texas and these, these crazy old thick woods I tell you why is everybody afraid to be sexy I love this place <laughs> it's beautiful I, I is that your question? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is something that I wonder, though, because everybody's always like, you know, I wouldn't go to East Texas, I wouldn't go to East Texas. And I'm sitting there like, this is my hometown. It's absolutely beautiful out here. It is super thick, super green. Maybe that's why it has that kind of appealing. You know, it's so thick, and you can't mm -hmm. see more than 10 yards in front of you. So, that's why I love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect beautiful. for introverts because you don't have to see your neighbors. <laughs> you got no yeah. neighbors, no nothing. Oh, yeah. Um... I'm trying to think of I'll have to save my good question for the next one because I had a question asked to me once that I loved this is just a personal question why do you play with shades on people can't see my eyes <laughs> <laughs> true story no but your eyes tell a story and especially if you're sitting there singing a song and, and you make eye contact with somebody for three seconds and it's just like it's a shared little moment I mean um well, you know just, whenever I like those kind of moments they do hit and I'll, I'll point it out you know like hey you know or, you know, when I play acoustic shows not full of band, you definitely have a more intimate situation, right. you know. I get, to, I get to really interact with my fans when I play my acoustic shows, which I really love to do. You know, full band, you sound great, you're loud, everybody's screaming, dancing, having a great time. But I really do like playing my small acoustic shows because that's where the songwriter really comes out. And people really embrace and enjoy the songs I write. They sit there and, and observe every single strum, every single vocal that comes out. They absorb it all, you know, and that's what I really do love. Um... I started playing my sunglasses uh, a while back, I think. I, I do have a lazy eye. Okay. <laughs> my right one. Only when, when I'm uh, drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. So I get a lazy eye. I and just on my you. right one. So I, and for pictures and videos and shows, I'm like, oh, I have my lazy eye. So it's maybe it's maybe self-conscious kind of thing. Uh, I, I don't understand. know. Sorry, I didn't mean to... No, you're good. I was, just, I, was, I was just wondering. I was like, is, is he going Always. for like this this whole tough guy look, or is there some reason behind it, or what? No, I'm the happiest <laughs> guy in the world, I promise. But no, I just I think it's like my cover, my guard. I got you. Works <laughs> for me. Uh, my next question. Uh -oh. Venues. Mm. If you had one to pick right now, where would it be in? Like to play. Mm -hmm. Like your top number one bucket list venue. Oh, bucket list. Okay, that yeah. makes things no, a lot yeah, no, like, easier. Not what we're, yeah. No, it's not exactly list. a venue, but the all sub stage at LJT. Because Likewise. it's, you know, it's 12 o'clock in the morning, so you're kind of catching the folks who are trying to get there early for the main stage, but mainly you're catching the folks at the, at the campsites or who are just leaving the Bloody Mary mornings out of T-Birds. And 
they're the folks that are going to sit there and just, yeah, they're cracking a beer or two or seven if it's me. <laughs> but a limited amount. <laughs> they, yeah, it's, it's, it's this big group of people, but it feels like this intimate, you know, 15, 15 person crowd setting because everybody's just sitting there and they're pretty quiet and they're listening to your music and you can sit there and tell stories like what we're doing here right now. Exactly. And people actually care about the music more there. It's, it's not about seeing how much of a handle you can slam, which for me, by the way, it's about two thirds of a rumple bottle in about an hour. Well, I've done that almost before. a whole year to LJT to step up that game and get conditioned. Well, rhymes and vines in, in <laughs> September. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. working on that last third of the bottle. But it's, it's not like the main stage where, you know, you, you want to go and drink and get rowdy and stuff like that. And that's great, too. Yeah. But with the kind of music I play, I'm like, I'm not main stage material, and I am in love with the all sub stage. I go out there every single day just to catch, because they have a lot of new and upcoming artists out there as oh, well. Yeah. Some full band stuff, some acoustic stuff, and I love it, and they always do a tribute out there as well. So There's nothing about LJT I don't love, though. Yeah, I tell you, from the moment you pull in into your parking spot mm. to the moment you leave, you might be hurt <laughs> when you're leaving, but you're still loving every bit of it. Shoot. You know, Especially I, the food. There's oh. just the gator, ba- uh, the gator basket people. They're from oh, out of Grand Saline. I'll tell you so what. So shout out to East Texas. I love you guys. Um, New Mexico boy yeah, the- still travels to LJT. <laughs> <laughs> the gator basket folks. I go there every single year. So if you're at LJT and you see the big yellow and red sign, go get food there. Tell them Terry Lee sent you. Oh, yeah. You can't miss those, I tell you. I, I can't say they're going to give you a discount, but tell them that I sent you. <laughs> They might give her a discount. Yeah, they might give you, <laughs> Maybe, <yeah. laughs> might give so. you some free food. Oh, At Lord knows I need it. If I turn sideways, I disappear. <laughs> I got a couple I could give you. Last question? <laughs> cool. Um, tell me about your first guitar. We were talking about that earlier coming up here. Like, just kind of talk about the story again. And Yeah, my first guitar... Um, we were just talking on, you know, how we both started this, you know, music journey pretty much, you know, and how... How we started getting going, and I told her, you know, I got in some trouble with the law at a younger age, and I was sitting in my room, and it was for something I didn't do, and that's what pissed me off about it the most, you know, so I was really depressed, and I, I grabbed my mom's guitar, it was her guitar when she was a kid, so obviously it's an older made guitar, mm-hmm. um, but she bought it in New York, because that's where my mom is from, and uh, it's a Goya, it was a Goya, not a lot of people know about them, they're, they're really rare, they're made out of uh, Sweden, and um a guitar from overseas, but mm. I'm talking probably the best sounding guitar I've ever played, like just straight acoustic. And I fell in love with that guitar, and I I carried that guitar all the way up until I was in college, um, fully playing and writing songs on it. And uh, mm. me, and Mr. Partier, you know, have a party, you know, and somebody stole my guitar. Oh, and so yeah, I lost my Goya. She's floating in the world somewhere, along with my hummingbird that got stolen in between shows. I've had a, I've had probably better luck with women than I have guitars, you know? And that's, I don't have no good luck with them either, so <laughs> I think I'm just going to stick to this old breed love. She's been good to me. No, uh, yeah, my Goya was the first guitar that I, that was a guitar I learned how to play on. That was the first guitar that made my fingers bleed. <laughs> I mean, even my breed love, though, that I have right here, uh, I, there's literally blood stains on the inside. Oh, Lord. Blood splatter, you know, because, I mean. You can't I'm, say it's been that bad. Like it's splattered from the bottom up the side, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I just play from the heart. So I mean, obviously you're a picker as well. So the finger picking, and, and you know when you start strumming, mm-hmm. jamming, you'll start busting them a lot more than not. So I was like, I'm finally building up my my callus on the side of my thumb here from yes. picking. Yes. But I was so pissed. I went because I thought it was a good idea to get a manicure, and so I went in and they took off all my calluses on this hand. I had to build those things back up. I'm still working on it right now. So if I play for more than an hour and a half. It starts getting to me, and I could usually pay, play for like four hours straight and be fine. So, I've got to remind I, the lovely little ladies at the uh, nail salon if I ever get my nails done again, because that was kind of scarring. <laughs> Please don't take my calluses off. I need those. Yeah, I need those. I it's the only way those. I can prove that I work. <laughs> so this one was called No Reason Left to Stay. I wrote this after I went to go see Turnpike Tomb Doors for the first time. Don't kill me now. Back in uh, New Year's Day of this year. <laughs> it's just it's been scheduling I, I haven't been able to go out to see them for a while um, but I was listening to a lot of their acoustic songs and he's got this song uh, excuse me he's got this song called Bottoms Up that I was listening to uh, just on repeat on the way home from Tulsa and that's a six hour drive so I listened to the same song for six hours but um, all of a sudden this, this song idea just came to me and so I just I used my voice memos because I was driving and, you know, no texting and driving, that's bad. Uh, 
but I, I wrote the words to the song and I went back home and kind of put some music to it. Um, and then I didn't really do a lot. I did I put the music to it, but I didn't actually work on it. And so one night I could not sleep. And so I was up until about five o'clock in the morning. And I pulled this song back out because I hadn't really worked on it or performed it too much. And worked on it, put it out, and everybody seemed to like it. So this is a song I wrote called No Reason Left to Stay. Well, I think I'll take my leave now. I know my way from here. Thanks for your concern, though I don't figure it's sincere. So I best fit you would do and be well on my way. I grow weary of your company and I've no reason left to stay. Once before I would have never feared diving in too deep. But I can't trust empty promises you've no intent to keep And although they say that compromise comes in all shades gray I can't love who you've become and I've no reason left to stay So thanks for your time darling but I've had all I can stand I apologize for letting your heart slip right through my hands and if I could find the words, I might have something more to say. But there's no sense in dwelling where I've no reason left to say. Well, my mama never liked you, but I don't think she's to blame. But you aren't meant to love me in the way that you claim. So I've packed my few belongings and I'll be gone within the day. I'm not one for sweet farewells and I've no reason left to say. So thanks for your time, darling, but I've had all I can stand. I apologize for letting your heart slip right through my hands. And if I could find the words, I might have something more to say. There's no sins in dwelling where I've no reason left to say. Well, I think I'll take my leave now. I know my way from here. Thanks for your concern, though I don't figure it's sincere. So I'd best fit you would do and be well on my way. I've grown weary of your company and I've no reason left to stay. To and all the reason left to stay. Thank you. That was the song I was talking about on the way down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the song I'm talking about. It's one of my favorites. If you're allowed to have Mine favorites. Mine too. <laughs> I've heard like songs are technically for children, so I don't know if you're actually allowed to have favorites. I know you're not allowed to have favorite children. <laughs> True story. I love them both. <laughs> so this song right here, I wrote a couple weeks ago. It's called For the First Time. Uh, I ran into an old uh, girlfriend from high school. Mm. And uh, she was in a relationship for 10 years. I was married and divorced and, and we ran back into each other and it was like for the first time all over again, you know? It really was and it was, it was like we haven't even missed a day and it hasn't even felt like 10 years passed. But so anyway, <coughs> I wrote this song called For the First Time About That. Fast life is a good 
songs today. Uh, so this song is a song I wrote called Golden Girl and I talked about Turnpike last time so pardon me for doing the same thing but I kind of stole the idea of Lori from them in my own sense and so I've got that song I played earlier today called Nati Nani and I was just driving home one day and I was thinking it'd be really cool if I could turn her into a recurring character and I'd already written half of this song I'd written the chorus and one of the verses but I decided to have 1990 be part of this song. And that's just kind of what I'm gonna call her. She doesn't really have a name. Um, but it's, it's essentially an idea of the girl. And this song is essentially about a one night stand. <laughs> I wrote it the best that I could, but it's, it's, it's about that girl or that guy, you know, depending on who you are, um, that you meet and you spend a night with and it's great and you never see them again, but you still wish them the best. So uh, this song's called Golden Girl. down bar like a memory from 1990 walked up and asked hey what you want to drink she told him whatever ah, me I'm not the kind of be a wine and dine water burger suit me just fine take me there I just might take you
Because whenever I introduce it, I say it's about a one-night stand, and that gets people's attention. Gets everybody's attention right on point. Oh, okay. I like that. We've all had one of those. Right? (laughs) Keep yours in the single digits. I'm going to keep mine in the singles, too, then, all right? Seven's just my favorite number, so that's the first thing that came to mind. Three. Mine's my favorite number three. <laughs> but damn, you know I'm going to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never okay. know. Oh, shoot. Oh, it's okay. <clears throat> I wrote this song when I was living in Denver, Colorado. I was walking out of Walmart, you know, and I just had my daughter. She was maybe two months old, you know. And I was supporting, you know, my wife and at the time and my daughter and taking care of everything, you know. As a man should do, and I walk out of the store, you know, with five bags in my hand, I'm like, Man, it's like I'm singing poor man's poetry every day, I tell you. And so it gave me the idea right there. I'm like, I ain't got a shopping cart, nothing. But I'm like, I spent over 100 bucks. It's like every day I'm singing poor man's poetry. So I went home that day and I threw some chords together. And uh, I really, really like this song. This song will be on the album. Uh, we're going to finish up this summer. So it's called Poor Man's Poetry. <laughs> It's it's coming along, but it's it's not. I'm I'm used to pumping out like two to three songs a week. In these past two months, I haven't written a full single song, and I feel like I'm dropping the ball right Those now. Those are the great ones. Get, let it be. Let it be. I it's feel the same way. I'm like, I haven't wrote the song in two weeks. Then I'm like, I get the idea and I'll start messing with it, and then I'll just put it away. And I'm like, I'll put it away. I'll save it for later. But eventually, that, I think those Here's are the, the ones. Thing. Every single song idea I put away, <laughs> I never pick up again. Really? I don't know why. 
I just, I, I never have. I'll go, I'll, I have about a thousand notes saved on my phone. Most of those are ideas for songs that I just literally never go back to. Really? I just, I guess I don't go back to much anything. <laughs> it's either <laughs> that, that it happens good or thing. it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. In the case of relationships, it's a very good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this song was the fifth song I'd ever written. I don't know how I remember that. Because um, I've popped out at least 50 of them. But... I hope it's 50, I need to. But this song is called White Pine Creek, and I wrote it, and I hated it. So I never played it. And I was sitting at the pool with some of my friends, and my friend Jarrett started talking to me about White Pine Creek, and he said, you know, when are you going to cut it? When are you going to record it? Because he he said he just went and listened to the video all the time, but he, like, actually wanted a, you know, Spotify or iTunes version of it where he could just play it and show it to all his friends and whatnot. And I was like, honestly, dude, I haven't played that song in a very long time. I don't even know if I remember the words to it, because uh, I figured it wasn't a good song, so I didn't touch it for about a year. But I had my guitar in my truck, so I went and pulled it out and I played it for him. And I was thinking, you know, this song isn't as bad as I thought it was. And so I started playing it at my shows for the past two months, I guess, and it's really, really grown on me, and I love it. Awesome. So I'm in the works of recording this as a single to be released sometime this year. I don't know. I go in the studio in a few weeks, but yeah. release dates are, are very hard to pinpoint. But this is a song I wrote called White Pine Creek. And what I think is really cool is I was driving home from Tulsa one night, and I got stuck in traffic. In, in, or I, I, was, I was driving home from Duran or Durant, however you want to say it. And I got stuck in traffic in Fort Worth. And for some reason, because White Pine Creek I just made up, or I thought I made it up. And I went and just looked it up on Google. Apparently there is a White Pine Creek in Idaho. So I'm going to go see that place in <laughs> August. And I'm like, I, I want to see if it fits the song at all. But my friend Amber said, every woman needs to have a good murder song. So this is my murder song. This is called White Pine Creek. Hmm. Middle of the night, left full moon with the bank as I raise my 45. 
I'll take that one. I don't know, I think that might be my new favorite here, as I tell you. I dig that. All right, so y'all have been tuned in to Songbirds and Troubadours. Number 18 already with Anthony Torres and Terry Lee Moore. Uh, just a phenomenal night. We have so much fun out here on Sunday nights mm -hmm. because it's all new music every week to us. And it's all live and in the living room. Very intimate crowd. There's usually like three of us watching. And uh, you guys put on a show. Like, you know, like you had tens and tens of people here. Um, kind of like the all step, uh, what's it, the all step? All step stage. Yeah, mm -hmm. all step stage. And we're going to get out to LJT next year, Life Goals. Yeah. Haven't been out there yet, but we're coming. Yeah, let me know. I stay right down the road for Yeah, there. we'll definitely do that. You got a guest room? Two. Ooh, hey, all right. Y'all heard it here. <laughs> it's live it. on the internet now. So all I got to do is come back and hashtag it and Instagram it to her. I need a room. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to start exactly. renting out rooms every year. <laughs> exactly. I'm All right, so you guys are probably time. wondering where you can follow along with these great songwriters, and of course we're going to ask that right now. So, Anthony, if folks are just hearing about you for the first time and they're a new fan, where can they follow along with your social media and stuff like that? Yeah, if you go to Facebook, uh, you can find our band page on there, Anthony Torres and the Regulators. It's Torres, T-O-R-R-E-Z. It's misspelled all the time with an S. Um, but it's a Z. If you, as soon as you look up Anthony Torres Music, it'll pop up right away. Um, on Twitter, Anthony Taurus Music, and on Instagram as well, at Anthony Taurus Music. If you got SoundCloud, look up Anthony Taurus Music. <laughs> It'll be there as well. A lot of old originals that I, I wrote a long time ago are on SoundCloud. So you want to hear the original stuff up to new, it's all on SoundCloud. Um, but uh, I'm about to release our EP. I recorded it a while back, but I've not released it on Amazon or iTunes lately, or a single. Um, but everything is going to be getting released in the next couple weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify. Amazon for a Cutter Rug and a Lawless and Hellbound. So at least definitely those two will be out there for sure. If not, the whole EP will be. Awesome. And if there's a venue out there that wants to book you for a show, what's the best way to contact you? Um, either any one of those sites you can contact me at, or you can also email me at ant3633 at gmail.com. And that's ant3633 at gmail.com. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. There is not a venue too small or a venue too big that... We ain't ready to play for. We'll do, I do acoustic shows, and also I have a full band. We have a stand-up bass player, harmonica, nice. uh, violin, steel. So it just depends. You know, we get we get it going. We keep the people on the dance floor and keep keep the house rocking. So awesome, very good. And we'll have his Facebook page uh, linked in the description down below. Uh, so make sure you click on that, hit the like button. You don't know how much that supports an artist just to hit like or follow. Uh, Terry Lee Moore, same question for you. Where can folks follow along with everything you got going on? I don't own a phone. Oh. I'm kidding. I wish I didn't own a phone. <laughs> That's I'm, why. No, I really do. It's 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 tedious. How would you write songs then? Money. A uh, pen and paper, you know, the old fashioned oh, way. Oh, hey, hey, what happens? That stuff still exists. Me going down the road, you know? No okay, well, that's because I was driving. <laughs> that's because I was driving. That's different. And that wouldn't be texting. I would be writing and driving. There's a difference. That would be weird. <laughs> I play guitar and drove. I don't find it. <laughs> so people look at you weird whenever you brush your teeth and drive. Hmm. I, long story, but I was I was on the interstate and brushed. Actually, I was leaving from East Texas. I had a show to go to. And I was brushing my teeth down the, down the road and this lady passes me and she's just like looking at me and like as she passes me, she's just looking straight at me. I'm like, what, have you never seen somebody brushing their teeth before? Yeah, so that is some serious multitasking. You're brushing <laughs> your teeth, driving, and watching someone else driving and watching <laughs> right? you brush your teeth. I'm Amazing like, stuff. Cruise control on a straight highway. You can write a song real quick, let me tell well, you. You get a good nap, too. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Do you hear about those cars that are apparently supposed to drive themselves? I don't know. No, I'm haven't. scared of them. I, I just want to grab All I'm going to say is thank God for rumble strips. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's Bless all I'm going to say. I always say keep between the mayonnaise and the mustard. If not, you're playing ketchup. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's true. That's a good one. But right, yeah, back, um, back on the rails. Sorry, How can people follow along with you? Um, so I'm on Facebook. It's Terry Lee Moore. If you go into the search bar and type in Rose Queen Music, all one word, same thing. It pulls up my page. And Terry is spelled T-E-R-I-E-L-E-I-M-O-O-R-E. -E -E. It's very difficult. I'm sorry. Um, and then on Instagram and Twitter, it's Terry Lee Moore, all one word. I am on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, and YouTube, and a lot of other places that I don't actually know about. Um, Same here. But they're like We're, they're up there somewhere. Yeah, we, we, we get added to something new every week, mm -hmm. so it's always cool to see that. Hopefully, so it's, it's this side of me. 
Yeah. <laughs> and do you have a web page as well? Or? Uh, not yet. I'm actually working on that right now. But okay. um, I am on all those music sites. If you just look up the 281 Project or Terry Lee Moore, spelt in that really difficult way, which I'm sure you'll have it posted somewhere. Yeah, out. we'll put it in the description down below. We'll put her uh, Facebook page mm -hmm. down there. Uh, so it's a one-stop shop. Just click like, click like, and you've liked both of these artists. And again, uh, I say it all the time, but it, it needs to be repeated. It's so much support just to hit that like button. For sure. Or follow wherever your favorite social media platform is, even Spotify, places like that. Mm -hmm. The follows and likes and stuff like that mean the world to these guys. Uh, because it helps with venues booking them. It for helps sure. with you know airplay for radio stations and things like that as well. Uh, and it's completely free for you guys to do that. Mm -hmm. You can just hit like, and if you don't want to do anything more than that, turn off notifications. You know, that works. I definitely wouldn't recommend that if you're a music <laughs> fan. Um, but yeah, just click like, mm -hmm. and definitely want to thank you guys both for taking the time to spend a Sunday evening with us here in beautiful East Texas. I love it uh, here. I'm so glad to be today, back home. But... Oh no, it was it was still beautiful. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry, I, would like I forgot. I thank my... you all for having us, or, no or problem, having me yeah. especially. You know, ETX rocks what you guys do within your you know your podcast and station and distributing all our songwriting and your interviews every single day. It doesn't just um, advertise the DPR work for us, but it makes us believe in our own stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, for people like you to take your time out and have us and doing what we do. Shows that, hey, we must be doing something all right. So yeah. thank you, and I appreciate it. I appreciate I'm, that. I, I finally decided to give in to your groveling and come. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying at all. It was, no, it was, it was just like, hey, do you have an opening, or are you, are you free? It was, I've been, well, trying, you I've been trying to, be, to get here for a while. You wanted to be on the waiting list, and I warned you mm -hmm. when you wanted to be on the waiting list. I said, if we have a cancellation, you're first on the list, so you're going to hear from me. I, I feel special. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, for booking... Yes. Uh, for my shows, you you can go through my Facebook page. I don't get notifications for my messages. I don't know if my TM does, but um, you can go through my email, which is rqm period booking at outlook dot com. Email Angela Flores and let her know where you want me to be, uh, what dates you're kind of looking at, or if you have any questions, you can shoot them her way. Um, and then I don't know her number off of the top of my head, but it's on my Facebook page. Yeah, so. and it definitely is. Just hit the About section on Facebook mm -hmm. and you'll get all that information. And also, you would be able to find both of our merch oh, on yeah. all of them as well. I can see these t-shirts, so definitely go get our t-shirts as soon as possible to sell out. I know she just placed a new order for your new yeah, shirts coming I'm, in. Yeah, I'm shipping those out Best this week. Best t-shirts I, <laughs> I got six shirts left, and so... And I got three CDs left, so I'm about to relist my whole order right now. Awesome. Coming up, so. Well, I'm Definitely glad get you guys your pre-orders in for better prices. I'm glad you guys have to reorder. That's good. always good Same. news. Always good news. All right, so once again, I definitely want to thank Anthony and Terry for spending some time out with us tonight. Uh, I know it can be difficult getting to the island that is known as East <laughs> Texas. Sometimes there's a wall around East Texas, and it's hard for artists to get out here to see us. Uh, so we always make sure that we never take for granted y'all's time. And, so thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having us, man. And once again, it's at Anthony Torres Music. On Facebook, it's Anthony Torres and the Regulators. With Terry Lee Moore, it's great. at Terry Lee Moore <laughs> or at Rose Queen Music. That's great. Um, so definitely hit the like button. And again, those will be in the description down below. If you're tuned in to us for the first time, thank you guys so much for watching or listening. You can follow along with what we have going on at ETX Rocks. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you smash that uh, subscribe button. That'll help us out more than anything else you can do. We just launched a brand new website as well, which is www.etxrocks.show. And you'll find over 10,000 hours of content on that webpage. That means live music, singer-songwriter stuff, interviews, all kinds of stuff. And the only place you can find all of that in one place is right there at the webpage. Once again, www.etxrocks.show. As you might know, we are completely self-funded on this show, which means we're low budget, y'all. I like to say low budget, high quality, and half of that Thank is you. true. <laughs> I'll let y'all decide which half is true and which half isn't. No, I won't. It's all true. Um, <laughs> but because of that, we have set up a donate link for folks out there like y'all that would like to help us in our mission of featuring the best independent artists on the planet. So that link is located at www.paypal.me forward slash ETX rocks. 
and we'll definitely take anything you have. Pesos, Drachma, Polish Slotty, um, Rupels from Zelda, um, Bitcoin. Can you take Rumpel? Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll take anything that might get us a future sponsorship. I got so, 20 pesos in my pocket. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. We don't really want pesos. I got lint. Lint. I think lint's worth more than my hey, pesos. <laughs> careful. We try not to get religious on this show. That's Terry Lee's oh, lint. I that's worth money right there. Oh, wait. That's lint. That's a different thing. My <laughs> bad. Uh, I'm sorry. I always get those two words mixed up. As we always say. I need more say, coffee. <laughs> coffee. Mm. Mm. Quote, unquote. As we always say on this show, we want to thank you guys out there for always supporting live music of all genres and all styles, even songwriters. And don't ever forget, ETX rocks. ETX rocks. That's right. From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong. Yes, this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the music's played. So tune right in, won't you bring a friend? This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show, let the music flow of every style. Socks that ETX rocks, ETX rocks.